Oh my goodness. Welcome to this live stream webcast. I'm Loren Gailey and I welcome everyone joining us in this very sacred heart space. Today we are with Sandra Walter, who is indeed a magnificent way shower. In fact, this is her 20th anniversary of being on her true soul path. Let's welcome Sandra Walter. Hi. Hi, blessings, sister. Blessings, everyone. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me back during this beautiful, powerful time that we're all experiencing. So gorgeous. Yes. Okay. So here we are. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. 2019, I've heard the word robust. Uh, that really makes a lot of sense. It feels like a rebirth. It feels like we are ready. We are on fire. And it feels like the word mastery is in the forefront. Can you address that? Yes, in a completely new way. That's the thing. The rebirth, refresh, renewal, everything has changed yet again. And we've had the experience of go leveling up in the past, but this is at a whole different level of collective ascension. And maybe I should get into the reasons why this is happening yes. in this now. So mm -hmm. last year, gatekeepers, grid workers, light workers working on timeline trajectories, collective timeline trajectories, because as many of you are conversant with my work, you know that it's a collective vote through collective action. And what we do heavily influences the timelines and our collective experiences as well as our personal experience. However, with the gateways last year and the gatekeepers and everybody that was in service, we were collectively working on collapsing the artificial timeline structures and migrating realities to the organic timelines of ascension. There, was, uh, there were opportunities during last year's energetic shifts for us to not just level up, but to actually give the entire population of Gaia, the opportunity to experience a pure and true organic ascension experience. So as the core magnetic shifts at the end of December started around solstice, she might have felt that energy. It felt like sandbags dropping off. It was just all these collective things that kept happening it started in May, then end of July. We had a release of all the the um, dark realms that were anchored into the false timelines, that dropping away, that going away to different parallel realities, some of it getting returned back to source. That was another freeing mechanism. We had all of this massive collective clearing, which pretty much everyone experienced in 2018 in one way or another, leading up to this transitional time. So with the December solstice, this energy came in, this pure, diamond solar crystalline frequency technically it's just positive photonic plasma but we hit a bandwidth of energies that changed the sun which changed the core magnetics of gaia herself so her crystalline core went through a shift which meant that we all the work that we were doing on migrating realities to the crystalline grid system to the new earth grid system. You may have heard us mentioning that throughout the last six years of migrating realities to the new earth grid system. So Gaia made the shift. She's still going through it. It's going to continue for another couple of months, but it's literally dropping away all of those artificial timelines and those structures. You feel your not just your heart opening, but it feels to me and this has been happening since mid-December, it feels like spring all the time. Like, you know that sense that you get in springtime where you're like, even when you wake up in the middle of the night and like the windows open with the breeze and it's warm, it's the middle of winter here, that's not happening, right? <laughs> but that sensation of waking up and it feels like the birds are chirping and there's renewal, renewal, renewal. That's emanating from Gaia herself. Yeah. And it's, it's really beautiful because what it's also doing besides all the migration to the organic timeline so that everyone is, so that the, the 
true or the pure and true experience of ascension is available for everyone, whether again, ascension is a choice, whether or not you choose it is up to you or when you choose it, choose it, I should say, because eventually those other realities will divide away. It's, you know, we're slowly dividing realities as well. But that higher reality, that organic experience, now it's organic on both tracks, no matter what train you're taking, you're still having that organic experience. So it's whatever you want to create. If you're creating, you know, doom and all of that, it just turns into earth changes and difficulties and a lot of shakeups and cha changes. And then the higher ascension experience is this beautiful heart opening. It's a lot easier to move into those parallel experiences of new earth that already exist. And that's the kind of breath of fresh air or spring-like sensation all the time where it's, and it's highly creative. You'll find a lot of creative inspiration coming that started coming last, um, the end of last August when we were making that shift, my, started migrating those realities, which is individual as well as collective, making it available so that those um, timelines mend. It's kind of interesting because when you drop away other timeline um, opportunities, let's call them possibilities, there has to be a through line in order for the experience to not just break off and end altogether. So when you change your future, you change the past. So, so much of it, so many of us have changed our personal future and our personal trajectory that now there's this mending function coming to with the past. And then, you know, we've met it in the now with this new energy that's coming in now. So you get that consistent feeling of, wow, no matter what's going on, okay. You know, it's, it's really a beautiful sensation of this now heart centeredness. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it makes sense. And I do want to say that the expansion of the sun now past the solstice in the northern hemisphere here, days are getting longer slowly by slowly. And when you mentioned this energy feels like spring, I've heard birds. I heard a bird out my window, a spring bird, and it's January 19th, and it yeah. is the middle of winter. But that's Gaia. And I heard it even out on a hike recently. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it feels, you mentioned like, yes, okay, be careful of where our attention is, where our focus is, because while this energy is very creative and very supportive for the new, it really seems like if we still have situations where our heart needs to be opened, watch out because we will face those situations. Mm -hmm. I was chatting like personally, um, like the me mechanics uh, in these past few weeks in the beginning of this new year, it's very interesting. We needed a furnace. Um, we needed ho um, home repairs on multiple levels. Our mm -hmm. dog needed emergency life-saving surgery. And I find that interesting because it's almost like these old structures, maybe that's that mending of the timeline that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a shift even in, in the household physical realm. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, all creations start in the etheric and then they anchor into the physical, but you'll find that being the reflection of that being much faster, of course, there's acceleration and we've experienced acceleration since 2012 but now it's like flywheel, instant manifestation, instant showing you, instant mirroring, instant auto-correcting, self-correcting as well. So when things are out of alignment, or uh, it, it's um, it's really good to pay attention to what's presenting, what's breaking. Is it is there something off? Like you're going to get a lot of feedback right away and some things just need to be replaced and it's a reflection of the larger collective thing but when they start when they happen to you personally there's uh it's easier to self-correct you know it's a very now kind of energy it's a very fast kind of energy and it's something that we all need to pay attention to as we go through this year and this mastery process because 2018 was you know such a kick when it came to energy shifts and 
body, the body physically having to upgrade for this new light. And that's still happening. It's a much higher vibration and a core magnetic shift in the planetary consciousness itself unlocks the keys through the sacred sites, through the crystalline grid system, the new earth systems to unlock the living library itself. Again, go, moving to a more organic experience of what Ascension was supposed to be like in the beginning. You know, So now we're getting into this Ascension experience where it's palpable and heart-based and beautiful and all the old stories drop away. If you remember that message that I shared from Gaia uh, just last year, when I was asking what kind of what are the stories like on New Earth and how much needs to be surrendered? She's like, there are no stories, nothing sticks. And when, when she says nothing sticks, so the stories don't stay, it's like creations ebb and flow much more organically. So things will come up and then you can uncreate them. You can create and uncreate. And you watch as long as your intention and you're working from the heart as long as your intention you can set forth light every day this is so important brothers and sisters set forth that light and that intention to you know take and reveal all the distortion take it out of my fields don't avoid it just show me what needs to be created what needs to be cre cor <laughs> corrected pardon me and then set forth light for the new creations and show me the synchronicities the opportunities what people, what co-creations, what unifications do I need to make for the highest outcome and my highest personal trajectory of ascension and the highest collective service that I can provide? And then hands off the wheel, let the higher levels take care of it and show you and pay attention. And when you do that consistently, it's so fast now. It's like the moment you command that, you know, the phone call, the email, the person, the synchronicities, the ideas, the, again, the, the creative ideas are really flowing right now. And when you take impulse on them, notice that you really need to let go of outcomes. That's the other thing about get, really getting into the now is if you plan and it has to be this way, that's, we're getting trained to step away from that kind of creation. And everyone's just going to have to chill out about outcomes and results and it has to look this way and I wanted it to be that way really let the heart guide you through that does that make sense yes and I know there's questions about how you can really tune in to those heart feelings those heart creations when we go to create a business or business uh, products and services to be in the heart is really key. And that's not always so easy because there's this component of uh, the financial money end of it, for example, how are we gonna um, pay the bills? But what you're saying is shifting away from that, knowing that we're doing it in service and letting it come about. So what are some ways that we can really tune in to the call of the heart? Is there a particular method that you use or how do you listen to the heart? Most of the lessons in the beginning are all about facing fears. And once you face those fears and push into it and, okay, I really need to face this fear. And, and even if people are, are getting into service work and they wanna create something new, that was the whole reason why I created that way shower empowerment class, which is going to be our offer through the, through this program. But last September I was shown, wow, way showership in 2019 is going to be the thing. And it's not about building your spiritual business. You need to like, let that go. Way shower empowerment is what is in your heart that needs to be expressed because we are moving to a planetary realm, the parallel new earth is all mm. about creativity and flow. And again, there's no fear, no stories. So whatever it is, the stories that you're telling yourself about, I'll do this when that other thing shows up or I'll take action when some, something else shows me, you gotta move forward. You know, you're moving into that. And especially with 
the embodiment phase being such a focus right now. It's been a focus for about a year, but for those of you who are experiencing embodiment of the higher self, this is a completely different energy, different realm, different way of expressing. You'll notice your, your voice, your words, your expressions, the way you want to present yourself is going to change. And the, the way, way show our empowerment was about supporting that because when I took a look at that, I was like, people need tools. They need, how, how do I find what's the highest thing that I can focus on right now? How do I gain clarity about that? How can I be more productive in these energies? Because we're leaving that whole period of time where light workers were just flat on their back and oh my God, ascension, and just it's gone. We really need to step in and be the way showers of this next phase of our ascension. And if you're choosing to be one of those way showers, you gotta get clarity on what your service is, how you wanna express it, and the consistency to do that, how you're going to communicate, what tools you're gonna to use, all of that came into play. And that at the, happening at the same time that embodiment is happening, it's, it's everything in the now. So it's not, I'll wait until I'm fully embodied and then I'll step forward. I have been told over and over again, you have to do it in front of everyone, which is a fear. You know, it's a yes. fear. It's like, oh, no, when I'm good enough, when I kind of fully express and walk on water, then I'll come out. That is not what this is about. It is truly showing the way and showing your authentic, unique expression of whatever it is you have going on. And it's not just spiritual guidance that's been going on for decades. It's how do you express what you are and what you have to share and your love in the highest way possible for you. And it's very unique. So this kind of copycatting, you know, imposing is, or trying to be somebody else, or a lot of people get an imposter syndrome because they're like, well, I was trying to do this and they're trying to be something that they're not. Mm -hmm. it's you really got to get clear on what it is that you have to offer and notice when it changes you're going to have to change otherwise things get difficult so it's the so the embodiment phase is really teaching us at this juncture how to be in our mastery and it does not look like anything that we thought it was going to look like I, I feel like we're going to surprise people because a lot of the way that Intel used to get interpreted by the collective. You have to realize the collective used to be this big. Now it's, you know, 80% of the population is on board <laughs> with some level of awakening, uh, at least yeah. uh, awaken to something else, something strange is going on. If not, you know, the high vibe tribe really yeah. going for mastery, but all, all of these things are fully supporting and embodiment that is new again, that new energy, new light. You know, we have surpassed what was predicted for how this was going to unfold for a lot of us. And again, there is the, the timeline split is, is not something to worry about because if you're consistently aligning with your highest trajectory and the best you can do, that's all that's needed right now. But you do need to take action. If you do have to step forward definitely need everybody on board and unity consciousness oh wow yes focus. we got to get together all of those things and not just talking about get to getting together but actually supporting the things there's a lot of things in place that work you don't have to reinvent the wheel you know there's a lot of unity things that you just need to get on board and talk about more share more so a lot of people that's their coming out that's their stepping forward is i need to admit that I meditate or whatever it is, you know, it, it, there's no judgment on where, where you are in your journey, but it is, this, this is the time where if we want bigger collective revelations to unfold, you know, that's on the radar right now, bigger revelations, then you have to anchor it in your personal life stream and remembering too, that these things have already occurred on the etheric level. And in order to allow them to happen on the physical level, we go forward with our heart, not the head. Yes. 
we're going to have you do a to give us a tool, maybe a an exercise or a, a meditation where we can go in and really anchor in these dreams, this higher, uh, bigger revelation into our life stream. Mm -hmm. uh, what a better time right now when we look out at the collective. Currently, our government is shut down. <laughs> And instead of really going into fear for any of that, that is actually supportive. Can you imagine if uh, all the workers in the government created nonprofits to do the very same jobs or take it to the next level of service? Uh, it's quite interesting. And this is where way showership comes in because this is, the timing is so perfect for all of us to create that new, new systems, new structures, right? Yeah, and see the reflection too, because if a lot of gatekeepers see the, the, the last anchoring of the dark and the lower timelines, the artificial timelines leaving last summer, literally at the end of July. Yes. And then you watch who leaves right after that, who left the planet right after that, interesting don't want to mention any names and then it comes to to solstice and and now you know the government shut down you're like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting a lot of shifting you know a lot of shifting clearing people get uh, it, you know you have to you have to look at the physical representations of what's been happening on the on the intel level on the higher dimensional level um, but one of the one of the best practices, because we are going to have to be that balance. We are going to be have, going to have to be that stability for everyone. Because people who do not understand what the reflection, you know, the reflection effect of what's going on, and especially as like Mandela effects get weird with your personal journey, because there's magnetics involved, and that's emotional and timeline based. So when your personal journey is trying to, like I said, mend the timelines, trying to, because you have to have a flow uh, of events in order for, for the higher timeline to fully come in. So there's, there's a lot of rearranging that happens on the back end. So personal and collective Mandela gets a little weird, but we're the, we're the ones who, rather than causing sensationalism, we create stability and balance. And the first thing I'm going to mention is if you can get together with your brothers and sisters in the higher realms, you don't even have to do it physically, but every Sunday for three years, we have global unity meditations. And there are other meditations that come in on eclipses and stuff like that. That's fine. We're just adding to that energy. We have an eclipse coming up a week from now, lands on a Sunday. We've got four meditations before the eclipse even happens but that's the consistency spiritual practice consistency that allows for a global coherence to penetrate the human heart grid which in turn is is a natural function of Gaia's energy field so you're assisting Gaia and the kingdoms and elementals by participating in that that activity highly recommend if you do not have a regular meditation practice, start, begin twice a day, even once a day, but train yourself to be able to tap in to that zero point in a couple of breaths, to be able to tap into the calm, the stillness within a couple of breaths will really serve the energies this year, serve your journey, because you're going to be able to just within a couple of breaths, even do it right now, just take a breath right into the heart, Exhale with an ah. And right there, that pure self, understanding that this little representation, this little spark of you down in this realm is the equivalent to a, a star in the night sky surrounded by entire galaxies and cosmos and universe. It's just that tiny little spark, but you are that huge thing. And during meditation or breath into the heart, exhale, you remember that you are 
that larger thing, that bigger picture. You are that God self, that source of all that is. You just kind of remind yourself and check into that energy and that spins out into your energy fields and you become that calm in the storm. So anytime something is triggering you, bothering you, you have a decision to make, something gets reflected in your energy fields and you need to make a choice, you can't search for clarity in the outside world. You can't search for that peace. You find it within. And then when you train yourself through meditation, it doesn't have to be this hour long thing. Meditation can be just a couple moments that micro meditations, if you want to call it that. But the more that you train yourself to immediately go into that state, go into that state of the trinitized beingness that is divine neutrality. When you check in on that divine neutrality, it will become a natural function of your energy, your own personal energy field. And you'll be able to immediately align with it, align with it, align with it. When you practice, you'll be able to just take a breath, touch your heart center, all is well. And then you can go forth with a peaceful vibration and a clear head and a clear heart so that you can make wise choices and wise choices in communication and how you assist people around you. So when other people are getting spun out or triggered by what's going on, you know, we do have earth changes have already increased since the solstice. When you have that kind of energy floating through the collective, you know, everyone's going to feel it. It's unity consciousness. It's a field of consciousness that we're experiencing. And the more that we unify, the more that you might feel that coming into your field or the more it's going to trigger people who don't know how to go into divine neutrality and divine neutrality doesn't mean that we don't care it just means that we don't carry you're like okay i need to get into my heart right now so that i'm not swayed into judgment good bad right wrong it's crazy it's wonderful and you stay in that neutral position so that you can make higher choices with your path so that you can truly assist your brothers and sisters around you in raising the vibration of a conversation or a moment or being there so that you can truly assist others as well as yourself from that diamond solar cosmic Christic consciousness. And that is embodiment. So it's embodiment practice as well. When you, when you establish these best practices, it's training so that you can be that pure presence because source as a creator incarnate, you're a spark of that source and source is not judging what's going around, but you're able to make higher decisions on what's in the highest interest of myself, what's in the highest interest of all concern in that moment. And that becomes divine service in itself. That heart pathway then stays on the highest trajectory for you as well as the collective thing that's going on. And that is that natural organic state of the Christed crystalline consciousness. And the energies are so supportive of that right now that when you meditate or when you meditate with us on Sundays, it's it's so pure and it's so beautiful that you, you just wanna live there. You literally just move to that new earth state of consciousness, that 5D and higher state of consciousness. And when you hit it consistently and all the energies that are coming in now and the solar activity that's planned on our trajectory to allow higher and higher states, higher and higher dimensional states of that consciousness to anchor into the collective, we really want to use that because by quantum effect, it is raising everyone, all willing hearts, always commanding that, all willing hearts that are choosing that to have an easier time of flowing into that experience. So beautiful and it's very promising. And so that's what we do. That's this connection every day. Beautiful. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about, I know you've got some things to talk about. But, um, <laughs> so we, we've seen where we've come in 2018 mm -hmm. and the gateways for this year, 2019. Can you go over those? Yeah, there's, there's no dates 
for 2019, which is beautiful that we finally hit this organic state where we don't have to, ah. we don't have to do that anymore. It's this, and the other thing is because of the time collapse and many of you are experiencing that right now. So I'll just touch on that. There's an astral collapse going on which is which is the uh, again the migration of realities but also a faster um, more uh, readily available experience of now time dynamics which accelerates what we call astral collapse now we used to only experience the astral as a collective in dream states what they called 4d and you could only experience it through dream state and through this ascension process it's been collapsing so that the barriers between our waking state and dream state are very blurry. You might have noticed that. Um, so your waking experience feels very dreamy. And then the dream state gets a kind of wacky as the timelines mend and experiences mend and people choose their higher trajectories and things get uh, kind of wacky in the astral for a while. And there's been a lot of the light worker teams that are going there and kind of clearing out Akashic records and clearing out all the artificial stuff. So it looks just kind of crazy sometimes, or maybe your dream state is getting a little stimulating <laughs> as we go through that. So you might be noticing that. It doesn't mean you're going backwards to where you're, you're separating your dream state and your waking state. It's just a big cleanup is what's happening right now. So don't worry about it. Um, but the, the kind of, uh, Plasma-like barriers between the dimensional expressions are starting to thin, what they call the thinning of the veils. But those self-imposed veils between your what you experience as 4D and what you experience as 5D, if you want to put numbers on it, are going away. So all of a sudden you're in that consistent state of 5D Christic consciousness, everything's flowing, you're working from the heart, very creative, feeling the diamond light, feeling the solar cosmic Christed light, feeling that crystalline DNA kicking on, and all of a sudden your focus goes there, and all the other stuff is just out of your consciousness, it's getting cleared away, so there's a collapse of that astral plane that made it kind of sticky, that made old thoughts, old memories, Go away. A lot of people are having trouble with memory through this process. It's fine. We're going into the now. You're not going to be able to recall the stuff that just doesn't serve any longer unless you have lessons. And, you know, that, that goes on until we collapse that realm altogether. But this embodiment phase, we were told embodiment changes everything. And it has because it needed to be a collective choice and it needed to be anchored uh, through the human hearts because this is the strongest thing running on the planet next to Gaia's heart herself. And as that amplifies, it starts collapsing those lower planes of consciousness that we just don't need anymore. So your experience becomes the higher new earth realm. So as those veils come down, we're starting to have more contact experiences this year. It's like 2019 has themes to it. There are waves of energy, but it's not the gateway date thing any longer. You'll notice how different the first eclipse this month felt because the energy was like, it wasn't the, um, do you remember eclipses? We used to feel like, it was like a, before a tsunami, you felt like everything kind of dragging out and then a wave would hit. We don't get that sensation anymore. So it's, uh, you'll feel the influxes, but it's a consistency. Finally, there's a consistency. So all those programs and everything that were keeping us, um, keeping it more janky, you know, more of like, uh, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Now it's on, <laughs> on, 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 and consistent. And that is DNA based as well. So we've got a new emotional system coming online because of the heart coherence of the embodiers. We've got a maturity, a spiritual maturity of heart intelligence and emotional intelligence stepping forth. We have positive alliances coming together. Finally, unity, consciousness really stepping to the forefront. And that's reflected in your personal relationships, new relationships. You're going to have to be in pursuit 
of unity consciousness and getting together with people who have the same kind of service, the same kind of mission as you do um, in order to co-create because everything has to have an um, element of co-creation. You can't just have you and your own thing any longer. Um, no separation, again, getting reflected in all the different, uh, all the different realms. Um, we're leveling up creativity. We're becoming that pure creator expression. So passion, joy, expansion. It's not um, a stimulating kind of caffeinated, busy, busy, busy kind of thing. It's this really expansive, like, wow, I just feel like I could do anything. It's because our oversouls have leveled up. And as that trickles down into our experience, you're getting a full on ascension migration of realities to that higher reality. It's quite extraordinary. So the intra personal skills of mastery become more powerful when the magnetics of the, of the, uh, of Gaia change and the grids have completely shifted to that crystalline grid system, um, which doesn't even feel like a grid. It's very flowy. It's, and it's, but it's unified. That's the key. It's not the nature grid, the earth grid, you know, all the, the sacred sites have changed completely. There's no more, you know, even, well, even with uh, the old belief systems about Mount Shasta herself, who I'm looking at right now, so I'm going to beam you all that energy, but uh, the old belief systems about it's the root chakra and everything. If you're finding old maps of earth chakra systems that have been around for 20 years on the internet, you might want to just dismiss those altogether. Shasta if anything, uh, operates as a crown chakra and has for at least 10 years. But you could see, again, the migration of realities and the migration of the earth grid systems to this crystalline-based system brings, because of the change of magnetics, then it changes the electromagnetic sensations and meridians within our own energy fields. So you start feeling more tingling, more energy surges you're gonna you're becoming an organic again that organic experience of becoming one with gaia we becoming one with nature and that has always been the path of the christ it's always been the natural you know even the scenes of other people who have explored mastery to the to the hilt they were always just oh this is like a natural function of of the experience. So our time in nature is going to be um, put at the, at the forefront during this, this whole transition to this very organic sensation of ascension. Uh, contact is on our list for 2019 is one of the themes, because again, it's not just thinning of the veils, but it's our experience of the parallel expressions of ourselves as we step into our mastery that we can now comprehend because we have a spiritual maturity. It's not a mass landing, mass revelation kind of thing. It's a vibrational match. If you're ready to meet other expressions of yourself or other expressions of consciousness <laughs> that are also in service to the pure and true organic ascension, that's going to be available to you, to you this year in a more physicalized way because, again, because the grid systems have changed, because the energy of Gaia has changed, and because the energy of the sun, the solar presence, has also changed and will go through a more accelerated evolution this year as well. So there are geometries that are around certain areas of this, what they call the photon belt, but this area of space with the highly charged stuff. And when we migrate through as a, as a solar system, it causes certain things to happen. And the changes in the sun, like we had a very active sun in the beginning of, of this month, which is unusual for this time of year. And you could see like the magnetic grids going off, geomagnetic storms, et cetera. Again, nothing to be concerned about because if you're, um, if you're a chart watcher or that kind of activity stimulates you, you might want to break that habit of checking the charts and, oh my gosh, I feel something. Oh my gosh, I feel something. You got to get out of that habit and get into the habit of 
being the master of your own reality, as well as your own expression, and following the higher creative, how can I assist? You know, it's it's fun to look at that stuff, but if it becomes habitual, you got to break all the old habits, old stories, um, because there are things coming in and occurring that will not appear on a linear physical chart. So it's it's more about checking in with your heart and the way that your energy fields feel rather than looking at the external for validation of what's happening internally. Maintaining balance, huge this year. And that means, and because crystalline DNA is starting to etherically rewire our systems and producing this higher elevated experience of ascension, you're gonna to have to be really good about your diet and your movement and extra water and the, and really embracing your multi-dimensional presence in form because the body is the vehicle for that experience. So if you want to choose that experience, it, it would be a really good idea, especially as the, as the grid shift and Gaia starts to expand and that living library thing where she starts exposing different revelations and different things about ourselves, different things about the um, past, which is really the now and all the, the other sacred sites that haven't been online or haven't been explored. That kind of stuff, you know, kind of does a number on the collective psyche. So our, our own, you know, we deal with our spiritual nutrition, but also deal with the physical because we are experiencing rapid evolution in one lifetime. You know, those of us who cho chose to incarnate during this heightened ac acceleration, this jump time, in order to experience it in the physical, you really have to take care of yourself. And that's that was such a theme in 2018 with light workers breaking bones and medical stuff popping up and seems to still be happening to kind of reveal, hey, you need to really go into um, an organic experience of the body <laughs> and really support that. And there's so much information out there about fully supporting your brain and your heart and your nervous system. Nervous system, again, will really uh, get hit by the kind of geomagnetic activity that comes with a core magnetic shift. So we, we need to take care of ourselves, rest, sleep, enjoy, get out in nature, get out in nature, get out in nature. You won't be able to help yourself, especially with this spring-like energy. You just wanna like run outside and play and take a hike and be by the water and be with the trees and the birds. And, and it's funny you mentioned the, the birds earlier. I've been hearing birds in the middle of the night. <laughs> what are they doing? You know, it's like Waking one, us two, a, two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, and like, they're like flying overhead or chirping next to the window. I'm like, you're not supposed to fly when you can't see. What are you doing? You know, it's really interesting how it's affecting the kingdoms. I think we're going to see a lot of, a lot of that. Um, and then the, the last thing for 2019 is because there's more people uh, going into this greater coherence, it does push the envelope for that new level of service work to come forward. And it, it won't be just your service, my service, but more of an our platform kind of thing happening. And that's probably the scariest thing for uh, a lot of people is like, they don't know how to work with people. They're afraid of working with people. I've had me in my ascension process. I just want to go back in the cave. You know, but for those of you who are getting that intuition or the, the gentle or not so gentle nudges to move into a public expression of your own heart, again, it's not about a spiritual business. It's about having the heart to express everything in order to teach, in order to show the way. And whatever that is for you, I'm, I'm really, I'm actually really impressed by the people who have come into racial or empowerment with these beautiful, beautiful services and ideas and they're moving forward and they're bringing in big people. So this is, this is an interesting time because now we have larger organizations who 
see the awakening and the ascension as where this is all going because they're you know they're part of the human heart grid they're getting the same like well i really have to move into service to others otherwise my business isn't going to last or whatever so they're looking for people to partner with and that's and that's beautiful because it's something that we felt you know 12 years ago we're like this is where this thing is going and now the businesses are starting to show up and they're like show me how do i transform my business and there's so many light workers that have that experience and maybe they left their job years ago or whatever but now they're kind of paying forward their skills like i have that skill i can combine it with everything that i've learned i can show you how to make your office more cohesive more coherent to the new energy i can tell you what's going on with your with your coworkers what they're experiencing because of the energies, you know, all, all these different things. There's so many opportunities to, again, migrate into that organic ascension experience where everything is conscious. Everything is conscious. And it, it hits everything, every business, every service, it hits everything where it just has to move into alignment in order to maintain that higher trajectory. You know, so. It's that is so beautiful and it's very promising too. And so it's empowering for all of us to stay heart centered and create from that realm. Mm -hmm. It is empowering. I love how we are the stabilizers of this and it's mm -hmm. what we're here for now. And so we mm -hmm. wish everyone a wonderful time doing that and creating and being inspired it's when we go into that zero point, that meditation, that the inspiration comes. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to something that you said too about contact. This is a fascinating subject mm -hmm. and it really is consciousness. You've been on Mount Shasta for many years now and you've had your own experiences with contact. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so much the physical, is it? It's more of a energetic interface, a feeling. Can you elaborate on that? Well, the 2019 focus is on the physical stuff, stepping forward as a Physically seeing. more often stronger. Those of you who have had beings come into your presence some of them might get more physical just because the energy has shifted so now their va veiling frequencies and your personal veiling frequencies if you so choose um can thin and you can start to have those conversations i found this really interesting so last last autumn i was meditating on it was something that presented in my meditations because i started seeing more my my um team started getting more physical and i was like is it just the energies or is it is this turning into something else because uh, obviously i've had many experiences um in in the physical and with physical beings on mount shasta and a lot of them um more energetic experiences are just, you know, very large beings, but they're just presenting as like sparkling fields of light. And all of a sudden they started becoming more physical. And I'm like, well, is it, are you stepping down? They're like, no, you're leveling up. So now my own personal experience can allow for that without the body vehicle freaking out. We definitely get a lot of training in that, especially people who deal with the galactics, you get a lot of training in in training your energy fields to not um, flinch or react uh, when a being comes into your presence. Because for some people, it's like getting hit by a train. You know, that, that um, frequency comes into your field and it's like, it's so much, it's such a higher frequency and it's so much energy and, and so much, you know, divine frequency too. It's, you can only handle it for, maybe they'll come into your vision for a few seconds and then leave. And it's just, it's so startling, you know, the first few times that it happens, it kind of entrains your fields and they start showing up. But I was told specifically that this, this year, there's the, the beings who are closest to our frequency 
which would probably be more like um, inner earth or a Pleiadian frequency, uh, would start showing up in a more physical way, which is um, interesting if you want to have that experience. Yeah. But the other thing I presented at the same time was um, the dismantling or removal of all of the, let's say, sensationalism or negative stories or fear about what certain races do or what they don't do and all that old stuff it was like clean slate time like old conversation gonna move into you know again the revelation energy is very strong for this year so when people talk about revelation of secrets a lot of them are, are stuff that even the new age culture uh created about you know what contact is and isn't and and who did what and everything there's a lot of those old stories that are collapsing and just don't matter anymore so when you start with a clean slate and a clean heart you got to be open to to what's presenting but the interesting thing i found about that conversation with my higher levels was uh they were like be it, it's about being a good witness and I went to um, my roomy poetry book after I had that meditation and I just was guided to go there, the, like just book divination, open it up to this beautiful poem about being a good witness, letting source God see through your eyes in a very clear way without distortion, without judgment, without deciding what uh, reality is and is not. And I found that very powerful because I'm cultivating some talks that I'm going to do in Sedona, where I've been asked to speak specifically about galactic interaction on Mount Shasta. And my, a lot of my interaction has been of such a, a sacred nature, and it, it did not match the stories that people had had with interaction with masters and inner earth and telos and stuff like that those um, kind of older new age stories that come with the Mount Shasta. St. Germain, the Lemurians. All, all that stuff. It was just like, well, I don't know. There's like this different thing happening. And it felt like a very natural, organic experience, you know, becoming one with the kingdoms and the elementals and Gaia and God and everything. And just, it, it, fl it just had a flow to it. And especially with lightship interaction and being on the lightships and, having beings come into your camp or you know all these all these different things that have occurred but i always found it like a very sacred experience rather than something that was scary or disharmonious or or um any kind of negative interference so well, can you a different realm so inquiring minds want to know can you share some of those experiences um, what was that like? I mean, it's a sacred experience. You feel the love, you feel the oneness, but what did you see? What was that like? Yeah, and, and just to be clear, it's not like being smothered by love and you're totally blissed out. It's my, I, I go into that, that situation, like I create that space by doing I mean, I do, I use Vedic mantras and I was really um, impressed years after I started that to see that like Dr. Greer's protocol and also in, includes Vedic mantras because it does, it changes the structure of your energy fields and the space uh -huh. around so there can be interaction. Um, but but my, my first contact was actually after doing the whole round of the Gayatri mantra. Really? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. And it just, it just put you in that, in that state. And then I'm having this like communion with source and having this conversation with source. And that was my first lightship interaction, um, which is, and it just makes it, what that does is it makes the interaction seamless. You, you match that vibration and then telepathic communication can occur. Now, certainly with beings like, uh, well, even with the Sasquatch, you know, because the Sasquatch, they're just out of phase, but they kept coming into my campsite and taking care of me. And, you know, the oh, first they did? year, yeah, the first couple of years that I was here and and the first interaction where it was and, and telepathy for people who've had experiences with telepathic communication, it's clear, you know, there's it's seamless. It's not 
that person is saying something and you hear it and then you're, it's just like, it's, it's a, there's a consistency there um, or a coherence there where it's you receive and send simultaneously, but, and yet there's enough linear space that you can ask questions and feel and receive and stuff like that. And, and the first thing that the Sasquatch said to me when he kind of kicked out somebody that was um, camping too close, too loud, too weird, came in too <laughs> late into my sight. And the first time I saw them, I just like looked up from, from, uh, from my, my camping area and this person had come in and the Sasquatch just appeared between these two trees, like beelining for the guy who came in to, again, after sunset, too close, too weird for a girl who's camping alone. Like, you don't do that, you know? It's, it's just not cool. And the moment I thought not cool, boom, there goes the Sasquatch. And moments later, that man got in his car and like tore out in the, uh, of the camping area and drove down the mountain, like didn't even try to find another camping spot. Like he just got startled by something. <laughs> and then the Sasquatch came over. I was like, oh my gosh, did he just do that? And the Sasquatch came over and did what all of my guides in the higher realms do and I don't know if he was imitating them or if it's something that that they do too, but he gave me the bow and he was like anything for the gatekeeper. And at that moment, I thought, oh my gosh, he has been watching me for months doing all of this gatekeeper ceremony and everything that I've been doing. He's been watching that. He knows everything, everything that I've been doing. I was like, wow. And once once you experience that, it's like, okay, are we go, are we, we have a relationship now <laughs> and now we have a, a friendship where he has done things he takes care of me he watches if i ask a question and it's whether it's telepathic or out loud i'll be in my in my tent and he'll stomp his foot right next to where my head is you know really? he has a big foot he's a sasquatch right? but he'll, he'll stomp three times that's our 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 um our little uh sign yeah we like click rocks three times or whatever and he'll stomp wow. three times if he heard me talking about something that i would like done or apologizing sorry those people are so loud over there you know because it's their sacred space where I, where i like to camp and uh and he hears me all the time and then he started appearing more physically which uh which is beautiful it's a little startling because they do look quite different but even just yeah even just like a, a Sasquatch interaction. And the same thing happened with some Pleiadian, some inner earth folks. For some reason, inner earth folks don't step on the ground. They kind of float above it, but they make footstep sounds so that I know they're coming. You know, if I'm in my sacred space doing gate work, I have my eyes closed and then I'll hear crunch, 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 crunch. I'm like, okay. And for me, I don't like rubberneck to see who's there. I, I have my own protocol for no matter what is approaching. Blessings, beloveds, thank you. I am in gatekeeping space in this now moment. If you would like to join me, please join me. Otherwise, I'll be with you in a moment. I don't stop what I'm doing, you know, because I'm like, well, if it's, if it's a being who wants to share the space, they will honor that. And if they don't, you know, they're gone. So it's... And then, of course, they'll come into the circle and they participate. They honor that. You know, they know what we're doing. They, they see everything that we're doing. You know, there's no veils up there, you know, in that realm. So it's the, um, but it's once you get used to beings coming and going, of course, you are in command of your space. But I'm recommending that everyone have those. It's like a, it's like a fire drill. Like, what's your first move? kind of thing so that because I've had even people who have had a lot of experience with higher beings and higher realms the moment something a little bit more physical starts showing up like all is lost you know it's, it's just like insane, protocol, right? go, protocol goes out the window they're like oh my god and I, I just like freeze and they forget who are you blessing you know I, immediately blessings beloved do you have are we having a conversation? Is there something I can help you with immediately? So I said, what can I do? You know, and I'm, it, it's not always like that just because I have a lot of beings coming and going a lot as a gatekeeper. So if something comes into my space and even if you just see 
you know, the, the orbs going off, the little sphere things, the little pinpoints of light. I'm very lighthearted about that kind of interaction and I welcome it and I speak out loud. I encourage everyone, speak out loud when you see, you know, sometimes they just beam a little too close to your face or whatever. It's just like, hey, honey, okay, can you just back off a little bit? You know, hi, welcome, what's up? You know, and just be uh, as casual as you can, but still be respectful of, uh, of both of your space. And when you start having those conversations consistently, then it's like, oh, it's cool to start coming in and coming in stronger. And then the next thing you know, you're laying in bed and you have the ring of people around you or beings coming in, trying to be more physical. Usually it's eyes first. Wow. Yeah, I feel like that's actually something that we're learning too, because your eyes start beaming that Christ consciousness is a very strong, you ever, you ever met Brazzo, you know, the gazer, it's like that frequency comes through very strong through the eyes, which also makes it a DNA activation. If you've had DNA activations in the higher realms, they often do it right through the eyes. So there's activations that can appear and maybe they don't do the whole form. Maybe they just do the face. Lyran's very good at that. They don't show their whole body. You'll just see like the lion being starting to come through. And it's just an activation with the eyes. Get used to me, get used to me, get used to me. And whatever you do with that information, you can shut it down. Not okay, get out of my space. I don't know who you are. Or welcome beloved, thank you. A little bit longer would be nice. I would love to share space with you. You know, you can offer that and get your higher self on permission because it comes from the top down. So higher levels, over so levels, Christed levels, open that door. You know, I give permission, give permission upstairs so I can start experiencing it in the physical. And the more you do that uh, and, and realize too, that it's a sacred event really treat it with the sanctity and the respect that it deserves. It's not about take me on the ship, get me out of here, save me. Why don't you all land? It's, it's a realm of consciousness that is so entangled with our experience. A lot of times it's you talking to another version of you, <laughs> especially with the light ships. A lot of times I'm like, I don't know, we know we're on there. You know, or it's a projection of consciousness just to get us used to stuff flying around in the sky or the big cloud ships present. You know, we get massive lenticulars, not over the mountain where they're supposed to be, but, you know, off, off center to, uh, to get us used to something that huge being in the sky. You know, it's, like, it's just easing us into this marriage of the dimensions. You know, that it's, it's not... Uh, a rescue scenario. It's you should never beg for that to happen. It slows down the process. It's up for us to level up to that love that frequency, not for them to step down. That is so beautiful how you describe that. Uh, it's consciousness that we are interfacing with, yeah. and there's nothing to fear. It's it's Christed consciousness as well, benevolent beings who are. Uh, coming forward. That's so amazing, Sandra. So you saw these with your physical eyes for a moment at first, right? You'd see a person standing there, yes? Constantly, constantly. Wow. I was surprised when I came to Mount Shasta. I was like, God, this place is a zoo. There were so <laughs> many different races here and so many different multidimensional levels and everything. And then it, there, there was a bit of cleanup and that's an old story. So please, everyone realize that we have been clearing out those realms so that no, so that people wouldn't wake up in a nightmare, so that when the veils come down, it wasn't a zoo. That is complete. You know, all that stuff gone. This, this new light in 2019 provides, you know, the clarity that's coming with 2020. You know, I love that it's 2020 clear vision, right? But this whole 2019 is preparing us not for this big thing that's gonna happen to you, but that's going to happen because we are co-creating 
it because we're going to remember unlocking of the living library unlocks your DNA. You start remembering your true self, you know, where you left those keys to the creation of ascension itself. Well, that is really extraordinary. Um, here in Colorado, we've seen a lot of light uh, cloud ship activity. In the local newspaper, they even got one at sunset. I have the same photo myself. And uh, it's so obvious. You can see the shape of a ship. What can we do in a moment when we see a lenticular cloud? How do we tap into that? sacred experience oh sure well the clouds themselves you know sometimes it is just clouds or, you know it is just the elementals reacting to the shifting magnetics and the changes but the but the thing about migrating to the crystalline grid is now lenticulars are showing up in places that there there's no mountain there's no reason why it should be showing up in the middle of nowhere flat area all of a sudden you get a cloud ship looking lenticular type cloud and it's beautiful because it is all of these ancient portals opening up. Mm. And that's been a, a, a key to the, this, the clouds that have been showing up over the sacred sites for so long. It's always been the indication of where the elementals are showing you where the portal is, where the gateway is. And now they're kind of popping up everywhere. So sometimes it's revelation of a portal opening up. Sometimes it is a projection of, God, I had this great dream experience just a few nights ago of having a, a little machine and it was the uh, cloud ship generator. <laughs> it, had little, it had like three different buttons on it. One of the button was spaceship. And, and but you, we had it inside, which was really cool. There was this party going on and you could project like little cloud ships in, inside. And I was like, oh, it's like this little representation of what we're doing outside. So sometimes it is just, you know, us higher levels, galactic levels, uh, projecting big stuff in the sky so that we get used to it again. So people don't, aren't shocked. You know, they get used to something really big being overhead. So sometimes it's just that. But realize too, it is an elemental and you would bless it and greet it the same way you would bless and greet and appreciate any beautiful cloud, any gorgeous thing that's going on. You know, sometimes they're working, you see the sylphs, you know, working overtime the last decade or so, um, you know, cleaning up the skies and clearing things. You say, thank you. You do your gate work. You put down your crystals to assist, you know, all, all that stuff. We are working together. It's not them and us. Remember, this is unity consciousness bridging the dimensions. We are that crystalline bridge to new earth. It's DNA, it's our consciousness, it's us as a collective. So always treat everything as, it's as, as if it's part of your team, always. You know, it's everything. Oh, what are we doing today? Little cosmic cleanup. You know, we have a, a, a nice, beautiful, clear day and there's just one <laughs> cloud hanging out in the middle of nowhere, like no reason weather-wise for it to be hanging out and, and it gets bigger and bigger and you're just like wow this is cool all right beautiful you can always you know meditate connect to it it's it's beautiful and it doesn't matter whether it's a light ship or the the elementals or the elemental fairies or the sylphs it shouldn't matter you know that's yes. that's unity consciousness it shouldn't matter it's the same way you honor a mountain or another volcano you know, you treat everything as if it's Mount Shasta when you travel, you know, you shouldn't rate, well, Mount Shasta's, um, I'm going to honor that, but not, you know, the eddies behind us. Of course, you're going to treat them all the same because it is becoming one big Christed planet. So, and, and we should also treat each other that same way, no matter where, what somebody's job is in the collective creation of this experience no matter what their job is mm -hmm. always treat them from the heart no judgment that divine neutrality will serve you especially as things come to light in personal and collective revelations and the changes and all of that you know you have to get away from the waiting game and really just go wholeheartedly into now new earth 
now and feel it and behave as if you're already there in order to align with that parallel expression that already exists and just discount and discard all the realities that are unqualified for your experience because you're choosing something else. Doesn't matter if somebody else is creating that. Okay, go ahead. You know, it's just moving to uh, a, a different reality, a different state of beingness. And it's, it's quite lovely because it does make you neutral to whatever's going on on the planet. And that old conversation of when yeah. is gone. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So beautiful. So empowering. It just feels so good. And everyone should listen to this conversation again to get everything that you say there because mm-hmm. it really is comforting. And it really shows us our power and what's at hand for each of us seriously being right here in the now so i wanted to share with everyone that on this youtube channel there is a crystalline dna activation that you did we did it for solstice but it's on this youtube channel it's so beautiful and that is actually life-changing as well we can really feel uh, beautiful from that process but there's also uh, something that you said, the earth, the, the, the earth shifted magnetically and the sun changed. What can we do to harmonize with this changing sun? Well, the first thing to realize is that, you know, we live, we're experiencing a metaphor. So all the reflections are all part of the whole, you know, fractals all part of the whole. When you hear that in theory, and then you start applying it to the beautiful co-creation, creation, source's experience, again, being a good witness, okay, source, I really wanna feel uh, all that I am, all that creation is. And when you start getting into that beautiful state, the Christed state of feeling, not just all of yourself, but all of God, source, infinite creator as one, and you really vibe into, okay, so we are the planet and we are the sun and we are the galaxy and we are the universe, multiverse, all of that. Rather than um, treating it as theory or a, a cool way of mentally f- uh, creating a framework for our experience, when you really vibe into that, then you can start applying unity consciousness to your own experience, your own empowerment as a creator. I feel that 2019, we get to start playing with what unity consciousness can truly co-create because the vibration gets very high. But feeling into what's happening with the sun right now, rather than, I mean, it's fine to, you know, listen to the cosmic weather report from Sandra or whatever about what's happening but when you feel it as part of the Christed star, we did this with, um, I'm not sure if it's on the DNA activation, but we did it with the Mastering Crystalline DNA event uh, that Lauren and I co-created last year. But there is uh, the experience of the Christed star where you literally open up your crown and send that ray of light that you are up to the sun. And the sun has the same three crowns around it. It's a a trinitized beingness and it's the same trinity, three levels of crown that we get with a Christed state with our own body. And when you feel that, you can kind of pull in that Christed energy through that crown, realizing that the solar crown and your crown are the same thing. It's just fractalization. And you go down into crystalline core of Gaia, same thing. She has the same three levels of crown. And you connect with that. And you just kind of put put out points like an octahedron side to side from your heart center, front to back from the heart center, up and down from the heart center. And when you start to experience that Christed star, you feel the parallel experience of being the sun, of truly being the solar consciousness. And that's how I first connected with the solar beings. So there's solar consciousness that's in charge of how much 
and let's say the when and the linear experience, certain energies are delivered to the planet. But now that that's open and flowing with this organic experience that we finally aligned with, you'll start to feel in your own energy fields when you go Christed, which is happening right now, in your own energy fields, you start feeling not like a star or the star, Solaris, but all of that, all of the stars. You start feeling that universal cosmic unification. It's quite beautiful. But you can feel that octahedron type shape, which is just holding an intention for an experience and the geometries change, expand, go way beyond any kind of Merkaba structure. And you can feel that heart of the Christed expression, that paradise son of God sensation that you get with the Trinity, divine cosmic mother, the background energy for all of creation, heavenly father, the activity of physicalizing, bringing that sound into light, into form, and the paradise son of God expression, which is the awareness of all of that within the heart center. And that's how source is experiencing all that we're creating in this now moment. So when you tap into that, yourself as son, as the son, this is what is creating the solar flashing activity, which is already underway. So when you connect with the sun, and if you have your eyes closed and you're feeling, sensing that flashing in your ascension column, you're seeing it in your third eye, that's what's happening. Because we are that. We are that solar flashing activity. And when humanity gets to the level and the timelines and the experiences Gaia gets to that level when she's ready for it, we will co-create that. And we're not co-creating it through a demand, do it now, tired of this reality, <laughs> flip everything. We're doing it from, we have enough heart coherence now and we're all aligned with that intention, expressing ourselves in service, ready for the parallel reality. And so it is, that will unfold. So just bring all of that into your heart. Really light up that internal star. Feel it. For a lot of you, your journey includes parallel expressions as a star, as a solar consciousness in other systems. Unify those. Maybe you're in training to become a solar consciousness, which, which is not singular as a collective activity. So connect with the solar being, solar consciousness realm. Very pure, getting even more amplified and purified as we traverse these dimensions and consciousness structures and receive that pure, positive, photonic light through the delivery systems of our own DNA, the diamond solar plasma, all of those crystalline frequencies, just let it light up the heart. And when you're creating stability and balance, that is it. Breathe into that. Light up your heart, light up the star, and just let everything else fall away so that you can be that Christed self walking in these realms, experiencing in these realms, and instantly affecting the realities around you. Beautiful. So be it. <laughs> just feel that. That is so beautiful. And I just thank you for putting us all in that state. I really hope everyone can feel that. And that's our work. So thank you. Actually, it's our play now. The work is yeah. over. We are shining stars. We just have to tap into that always 
that zero point as well. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We are the solar flashes. That's amazing. Okay. Well, Sandra, Walter, this has been a beautiful quantum conversation. I really honor the work that you do. I'm so glad that you have a new course available for everyone. The mm -hmm. Way Shower Ship Empowerment. And this is really a way for those to step up and step into their way shower ship to create this stabilization in right. our world right now. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, remember that it's, it's touching on the things that keep you in integrity, in humility, aligned with your highest trajectory, highest level of service. If you really have the desire, it can give you those tools for clarity and creation. And gosh, we get into a lot. You know, my classes are always like, Whoa. <laughs> there's a lot of material um, and meditations and daily practices. And there, there's so many tools in there. It's really just kind of loaded. But, but it is about aligning with this state of the Christ. And how do you take that out in the world to your highest expression? What is the highest expression of you that is longing to come out and be expressed? And how do you stay consistent with humility and integrity? And especially as contact comes to the forefront, again, it is about being a good witness, you know, being, being there in that um, humble yet empowered state of, of consciousness. And especially as we go through the embodiment process right now, as more of the merge occurs, it we will, it, it keeps you in check. You know, it keeps you in check with your own process and with your own expression and how could it be more fun? How could it be more expansive? Who else can I bring into this? How do I do that? You know, I went through everything, including a whole section on challenges, what you're going to be afraid of, what you're going to do the first time that nasty email comes in, <laughs> what are you going to do with pushback? What are you going to do with feedback? All that stuff. You know, how a, you know, advice from a seasoned way shower on how to deal with all that and maintain your integrity and maintain moving forward no matter what and being able to express yourself. And, and I intend on sharing a lot of the stuff that came through for that class in in depth and in a lot of articles because it has some really good guidance for where we are now in our lightworker collective and what needs to change and what needs to be fine-tuned and how it will help all of us if we just drop a lot of the old stuff and move into the new conversation the next conversation so communication is also emphasized there's a lot, there's a lot in the class, but it's, it's for now, it's for this year. So it was created specifically for what we're going through right now, because a lot of people changing services. You know, when you have a timeline drop off, you're like, oh, I don't even remember what I was doing last year, let alone, what am I going to create now? So it's, how do you transition, you know, to your highest trajectory, your highest timeline with some ease and grace rather than just waking up every day and going, I don't know, I don't know, I know. It, it gives you the tools to move that forward. It's because we need you, you know, you're, you're needed. Yes. Expression is needed. Anyone watching this, everyone watching this is absolutely needed right now in this now moment. And that's why this is so empowering. So I hope everyone is feeling really empowered. Get creative, get aligned, use these tools and stabilize our planet. Bring new earth here now. It's wonderful. Um, you know, we talk a lot about this, but I don't know if anyone's watching the news anymore. It's it it comes down to humane and inhumane in my in my viewpoint, and that's the bifurcation: humane or inhumane. Mm. Well, you can call it organic or synthetic timelines. And so, here we are. And I just honor everyone for stepping into their higher calling as well. Ah, oh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, thank you, Sandra. This has been wonderful. 
You're so welcome, sister. Just beautiful to connect with you as always. And mm, blessings to everyone. Very exciting year. Mm. Join the unity meditations Sunday. <laughs> yes. And so, so Sandra, I yes. wanted to say something about that too. Those unity meditations are palpable. Mm. We can, we can mm -hmm. you know, you do them at the 811, 1111, 311, 511. And even though it's not that time zone, we can still feel the sparkliness of them. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's really it's quite incredible because the and the more that you do it, the more. I mean, we just added the early morning one for Australia, Japan, you know, because it was there tomorrow. By the time we got to our Unity meditations, and they wanted to participate when it was timely for them, um, and. I'll be darned. I just, I wake up right before that 511 meditation. It, it's just all of a sudden you're there, you know, and the whole point is not just unity consciousness to demonstrate what we can do with unity consciousness, but it's how we can organically and telepathically connect. And it's trained us how to feel each other, feel the collective and the collect so that we don't need the online technology. So that's why it happens offline and why it's, you know, technically you should be out in nature as much as possible. If you do it out in nature, you just feel like it's beautiful. You're just one with everything, but the, it's the consistency, consistency. Every Sunday, it started on Wednesday, then we moved into Sunday every Sunday for three years. And the, the consistency has built those spiritual muscles where we can feel each other. All right, now I can, we, we see the same things. Your vision is much more amplified. So we're really learning how to use and direct our unity consciousness for good, for peace. And it, uh, it's, it's quite remarkable how we can feel each other and the states of grace because it is a DNA activation as well. And we have a lot of gatekeepers participating. So when the gates are open, and we all connect as we all get the upgrade. <laughs> so you just feel, wow, like blissy by the end of it. It's just like, oh, new earth now, right there. <laughs> just a palpable experience. It's quite, quite amazing. But we do have, um, so next Sunday is uh, also an eclipse day. So we were warming up for it yesterday. And now we're going right into that gate of, uh, of the eclipse. So join us on Sunday if you want like the, the super meditation sensation. And then we'll also join uh, the groups that are meditating during the eclipse, like 9-11 here, um, PM. Uh, so we have the four throughout the day and then we're gonna add the extra one to join the folks who um, only meditate during the eclipses. You know, they have like, they try to get global mass meditations through some groups um, during eclipses. So. We'll also do that. Personally, I'm going to be looking at the eclipse, but I will tap in um, to really feel that because it's visible in, in North America. So I want to look at it. But uh, yeah, join us. Join us and spread the word. It's our meditation. It's not Sandra's meditation. It's ours. It's a unity meditation. So spread the word, create the graphics, download the graphics and the meditation from my site, copy and paste onto your own site if you have groups move them to sunday tell them about it just tap in and if you can hit those windows you will feel that palpable sensation and the more that we keep hitting seven thousand every sunday that's like the magic tipping point for changing global consciousness so we've been you know getting more and more people and dragging people into <laughs> into that experience so that then you can feel it like when we hit seven thousand it's just like you know, you could feel like the shift, shift within, shift around. It's beautiful. It creates such a beautiful energy field that actually elevates all of those around us. And that's what's so incredible about it. So beautiful. Thank yeah. you, Sandra. Oh, you're so oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Oh, well, all right. As we say goodbye to everyone, I want to thank everyone for joining us. It's so good to see all of you here. We can't see you, but we see you on the chat and the comments, and you're going to watch this later maybe and see this on the recording, and we just give you a big heart hug. This is it. I've said for years, we the people are the economy. We, the people, are new earth. This is our world. We, the people, Sandra, you and I were just talking about this too. The media is ours now. I get chills when I talk about that. Yeah. So it's just a beautiful world. Yeah. Stay focused. Stay on point with that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Blessings, everyone. Beautiful year ahead. Right now. Let's do it. Yay. Make this the year. The year for Christ consciousness. Go, do it. Go for it create, do it, unity, get together. It's beautiful. Okay. Mobilization <laughs> for unity consciousness. This is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Way, uh, Sandra Wayshower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take it. You are Sandra Wayshower now because you are such a magnificent Wayshower. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed this and I just so honor you. Thank you, Sandra. So welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.